Hey everyone, thanks for joining us uh, today in this week's Started in Seattle Profile. Um, I'm here today with Alex Algar, founder and CEO of White Pages, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the history of the company and their current transition into the B2B space. So, welcome Alex, thanks for joining us. Thanks Matt, excited to be here. Yeah, so tell us uh, a little bit about White Pages and what the company does. Yeah, sure. So, uh, uh, White Pages, our uh, uh, mission or our, our vision really is to provide a real identity for every person and business in the digital world. And um, fundamentally, uh, we're a data company. We've been building uh, contact uh, databases for you know, well over a decade now, ever since the late 90s, in fact. And uh, we got pretty good at that. And over time, as we started aggregating more and more information about a person or about a business, we kind of came to the realization that this actually started looking more and more like a person or business identity. So hence we made this leap into uh, uh, really you know, uh, positioning ourselves as a, a person and business identity company. We, uh, we source an enormous amount of information about people and businesses every month, actually over a billion contact records. Wow. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big number. <laughs> and um, uh, as far as our business goes, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, we, uh, we offer our whitepages.com website, which is a very heavily uh, trafficked website. It's free and ad-supported, primarily targeted at, at consumers. Um, in fact, we, uh, we have over 50 million unique users uh, every month visiting the website through uh, either through desktop or through mobile. Um, in addition to that, we also offer a uh, caller ID app, um, uh, primarily on Android, and uh, basically it, it introduces identity into the calling experience. So we want to eradicate you know, the days of getting a phone call and you don't know who the call is from or, to, or you don't know who the text is from. So we're basically bringing a rich identity into the phone call experience. So every time your phone rings or you get an incoming text message, we show a rich profile including the social network uh, profile picture, the LinkedIn job title and company name and so forth. So you know a lot about the caller by the time that you actually pick up the phone. That's awesome. I have actually been waiting for that problem to be solved for a while. <laughs> Great. Well, you should go and go and uh, check it out. Yeah. You can uh, just Google um, uh, "white pages current" and download it. Okay. Um. So. Oh, and, and there's one more, one more service to offer too. Um. Uh, we also have a, a B2B offering under "white pages pro." Okay. Um. And that's a more uh, more uh, recent uh, uh, initiative of ours. And that's like an API as well too. I think I understand like a what well, it's still not as good but it's your B2B API, right? That's right. Yeah, it's both B2B API. We also offer the service through uh, through browser access as well to okay. business users. Okay. Um, so as I understand, you went to Stanford, uh, but you chose Seattle to kind of uh, have White Pages headquarters. Tell us a little bit about why you chose Seattle specifically. Yeah, sure. So when I made the decision to uh, to start the business, I was actually living in New York at the time, and uh, I really had a decision to make between uh, Silicon Valley mm. and Seattle. Uh, and it was a tough decision, but ultimately I ended up going with uh, Seattle, partly because I, I grew up in the Northwest and it felt like home to me. But much more importantly from a business perspective, uh, this is just a great place to do a tech start. There's an amazing talent pool up here. Uh, I would argue that we have the best talent pool and certainly the best supply-demand ratio of top-notch talent uh, anywhere. And that's why a lot of the Bay Area-based companies are coming up here now kind of invading our home turf and setting up shop, which is actually great. Uh, it's a great place to, to work in Seattle for that reason. Yeah. Um, but there's also, I think there's other, you know, less obvious things. I, I just think Seattle's a really friendly city in a lot of different ways. We don't have to deal with, you know, okay. today now the class warfare issues are breaking out in the Bay Area. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's a cosmopolitan and, and really rich, you know, uh, city as far as culture goes too. I, I think oftentimes when, when people talk about Seattle versus, uh, Bay Area, they, they think San Francisco, and San Francisco is an amazingly diverse and rich city in many different ways. Um, but really, I think uh, you know the, the better comparison would probably be Seattle versus the suburbs out in Silicon Valley. And I think you know Seattle beats uh, the mm -hmm. suburbs of Silicon Valley hands down in terms of culture and a, just a really you know cosmopolitan yeah. environment. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I know the company transitioned from consumer to B two B at some point, right? Um, why did you decide to go into the B2B space? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's not quite a transition. Okay. It's more just that we're adding um, another you know, set of business lines and we're really excited about mm -hmm. uh, expanding okay. into B2B as well. So you're putting more focus on, on the B2B. That's um, right. Why, uh, why, why that thought process or why that 
uh, focus? Yeah, sure. I mean, it, it, it came about very organically. Um, so we, uh, every once in a while, we have to deal with, uh, you know, with bots. There's, you know, friendly bots mm -hmm. and there's uh, malicious bots. Friendly bots would be like Google bot. You know, we, we would like the Google bot. We don't like people who mine and scrape our, our database uh, for potentially bad purposes. So we're trying to shut those guys out. So we have a lot of scripts that try and um, basically automatically detect uh, very high volume uh, uh, scrapers. Okay. And uh, we kind of got to the point where our customer service team started getting phone calls uh, that said, hey, um, you shut me out uh, and I'm getting error messages. Uh, um, you know, why are you treating me like one of these bad bots? And then our customer service team would say, well, you know, okay, well, who is this? Yeah. And it would turn out to be some desperate, you know, business manager at some big call center at a, you know, kind of Fortune 100 company uh, saying, you know, I, I can't run my business because you shut me down. And we said, okay, well, we're sorry, we enabled them. And after, after a few of those incidents, we said to ourselves, gosh, it's probably a good business opportunity here. Um, let's not start, let's not treat all these businesses as, as the enemy, but instead maybe there's a way that we can super serve these users with better data and better product. Nice. Um, so you use your, I guess, experiences you're seeing and you saw the, the need and opportunity and since you had that offering, you decided to put more resources towards that. That's right, okay. that's right. Um, I guess since you have a lot of entrepreneurs, um, you know, B2C, B2B, they want to focus on something. What are the dif differences in building for consumers versus businesses when you're building services and, and a platform? Sure. I, I mean, th th there's both differences and similarities. I think on the similarity side, um, you know, there's this myth that enterprise users, um, they don't need well-designed product, then they're going to be okay with you know yeah. quirkier user interfaces and so on. And and I, I I don't think that's true. You know, there's this whole trend of consumerization of enterprise uh, uh, services. So I think you know iPhone uh, penetrating the enterprise with a you know beautifully designed uh, UI at the expense of BlackBerry was maybe like the first the first of that. And um, uh, we have our roots on the consumer side. We have a lot of uh, know-how in terms of you know how to build out good user experiences and so forth. So we've, we've applied that now to the B two B space, okay. and um, and we think we can do still a heck of a lot better. But uh, even our early customers, they just think that you know our white pages pro experience is is, is a godsend. It's so beautifully designed and easy to use and so forth, relative to some of our competitors out there. Yeah. So that's I guess that's a, a similarity between. Um, B2B and B2C, then on the differences. Um, I suppose one of the reasons that we even got into this in the first place is that uh, businesses uh, are better, they better value their employees' time, I think, okay. than maybe consumers value their own time. Um, it's difficult to, uh, to sell uh, content, especially directly to consumers. Mm -hmm. You know, you can ask yourself, like, you know, how many, how many, um, uh, uh, media companies that rely on selling media to consumers, reaching into the wallet and pulling out the credit card yeah. have worked. I just read an article yesterday about the newspaper industry and it's just scary You know how difficult it is for them to actually transition to a paid model. Mm -hmm. So consumers in general, I think they, um, they would, they're a little bit irrational almost in, in terms of how to spend the time. They might spend an hour hunting around for content yeah. if they can get it for free, whereas the business uh, is is uh, you know a better judge of maybe their employees' time. Uh, so for that reason, we're very excited about you know going into the B two B space. That's that's a big difference. Um, I suppose that also you know has some consequences. Um, so uh, in the B two B space, I think there's a much lower tolerance for site outages and you know expectations around you know three or four nine uptime. So that's been a learning for us as well because we tended to be a little bit more kind of like you know move fast and break things and so forth, and that doesn't always work as well when you have a business that basically shuts down because they're so reliant on the White Pages Pro API for their own business processes. So I'm a big fan of culture myself, and, and like when I see the, the White Pages office, um, I think it really portrays a good culture and work life. Um, it's just awesome space. Uh, what are some of the best things uh, you like about White Pages culture? Yeah, sure. So I, I think our office is kind of a projection of who we are as a company and our culture. Um, and uh, as you can see, it's a, it's a very open uh, work environment. Uh, nobody has a private office. Um, uh, we're very transparent in general. We've always been very open with sharing our, 
our, you know, both our successes and our failures. You know, when the company is doing well, we show our financial results. When it's doing poorly, we still show our financial res results. Um, so transparency is very important to us just in general. Um, we're very uh, 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 much a culture of doers, I think. Um, so, um, you know, everyone throughout the company, um, for example, even if, if they're a manager, um, they're all contributing work. And work as measured not in terms of the number of emails you send or the number of meetings you attend or host, um, but work as measured fundamentally based on are you building product or are you selling product? Those two outputs are really what matter the most. Um, you know, me as CEO of the company, I struggle with that. I'm very much in the overhead category. <laughs> and I desperately try and get back into like, the build or sell category as well. So that would be another one, I guess. Um, and then, you know, I, I, we really, really value our people as our number one asset. Yeah. And I think, you know, talk is cheap as far as that goes and actions speak louder than words. And what company doesn't say that they put their people first and foremost? Um, but we really try to, you know, respect our employees' judgment and decision making. Um, we have a unlimited vacation policy, and we have a completely undefined uh, expense policy because we really do think that people's judgment, you know, should should play the number one role there. Um, we uh, we we tend to uh, comp our employees, uh, you know, closer to top of market. So it's not like 50th or 60th percentile of market. It's probably closer to like 80th to 90th percentile. And we do that because we really want to attract the very best and brightest people. That's awesome. Cool. Well, uh, before we end today, is there anything else you wanted to tell the people watching? Um, well, you know, we're, we're in a, a very ex exciting stage for the company. We're, we're in a uh, massive growth mode right now. Uh, we're 150 employees uh, currently, and we're looking to add up to another 100 employees over the next uh, 18 months or so. So uh, uh, always looking for referrals for great people. Jobs at white pages, right? <laughs> That's right. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for joining us today and I appreciate the talk. Great, thank you.